The original upload of this video was taken down from YouTube for violating their community guidelines on harassment and bullying. I'm re-uploading this video because I believe all the criticism is valid and needs to be talked about. Suzy Liu is destroying the platform, and I can't let that happen. Suzy Liu is a reaction YouTuber with over 370,000 subscribers. As a self-professed businesswoman and control freak, she entertains her fan base of mostly older men by reacting to various animes such as Naruto and My Hero Academia. On the surface, her content is nothing to be too fussed about. Sure, it's lazy, uninspiring, and you wouldn't catch me watching it. But behind that is a brain of deception fraud, hypocrisy, and corruption. Susie Liu, along with her I mean boyfriend, Stijo, make the perfect couple. Together, they abuse the YouTube copyright system, systematically flag down people criticizing them, and yet their unethical and illegal behavior is directly protected and promoted by YouTube, with Susie Liu being a prominent figure in last year's YouTube Rewind. Over the last 12 months, I've been gathering the files. Today, we go through them. What is up everyone and welcome back to the channel. There's that much like misinformation, false rumors, hate videos and things like that. Susie Lou is a hypocrite. She files a false copyright takedown. Fair use is such a gray area. That's the thing. She has one of the smallest egos that I have ever known. Why would I care to prove my innocence to a bunch of nobodies on the internet? <laughs> and obviously if you guys are not aware, there is fair use. Wait a Copyright infringement has been a big topic on this channel and on my Twitter account. From Just Destiny to Onision, I've talked about many instances where individuals and companies have taken advantage of the YouTube copyright system. But there's one case that I've been putting off making a video on because at the time, I just didn't think there was enough information to justify a full video. But over the last 12 months, many more developments have occurred that makes this situation impossible to ignore. Let's start at the beginning. On March the 12th, 2019, gaming and reaction YouTuber Suzy Liu filed a copyright strike on a video that was at the time over a year old, created by gaming YouTuber Mark After Dark. Mark included a 23 second clip from one of Suzy Liu's Let's Plays of The Last Guardian VR as the intro for his video about The Last Guardian VR, poking fun at her reaction. Oh, please don't tell me that's the end of it. No! I want to spend the rest of my life like that. It feels so real. That's not fair. It's not fair. That's made me cry because it was so amazing. Stop it. Get some help. Wait. That was it? Yes, folks, this was the clip that offended Susie Lou so much that she took it down from YouTube. And I say offended because this is certainly a fair use clip. She knows that and her lawyer boyfriend knows that. Oh yeah, did I forget to mention, her boyfriend studied law. I have a law degree and one of the main focuses was international intellectual property law, which uh, apart from being a mouthful is, is a really interesting subject. It's about um, how people protect their intellectual property via like design rights, uh, patents, uh, trademarks and copyright. Just keep this in the back of your mind at all times here. Now, understandably, Suzy Liu received a bit of backlash for this strike. Mark After Dark took to Twitter, where a number of very interesting exchanges were had with Suzy Liu. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Twitter Versus. Today, we will be taking a look at Suzy Liu. After Mark After Dark called her out, she had some pretty interesting responses to the situation. She tweets out, Dude, literally no one cares what you tweet. You are just a massive loser. How I picture you, 
Ha ha! Ha ha! Be gone, nobody! You steal, you get striked. Maybe ask a channel for mission before you take their content will save you a headache in the future. <laughs> Thanks for the views anyways, boys. Must suck seeing such a noob get so much attention on your beloved game while you nerds sit in your mum's basement getting zero. <laughs> I own the copyright to my face, which is what you use without permission. You were clearly desperate to use someone who gets views to help your video get a boost. LOL. Too bad. <laughs> Now, as you can tell, we're dealing with a very intelligent individual. It's a good rule of thumb on the internet and in life in general that if you're going to criticize people for doing something, make sure you haven't done the same thing yourself. Otherwise, you'll probably end up looking like a massive hypocrite. This is the type of stuff on YouTube that pisses me off. This is a live stream. This is a YouTuber doing that live stream. Now, do you see this YouTuber in this video? Or is this stream just pure theft of BBC content? This is pure mainstream media content just being streamed. Here, have a listen. I haven't got any numbers there yet, but... There's no commentary or anything over this. It's pure theft of content just so that they can get views. Don't support people like this. This is no better than stealing something directly from someone's house or from a store. It's pure theft and it's bullshit. Ah. Okay then. This brings us to March the 21st, 2019, when Susie Liu took to her YouTube channel to respond to the criticism she was receiving. This video was filled with misinformation about the copyright system and a piss poor attempt of her trying to justify her bad decisions made in the past. I came across this guy who was bragging about doing a video on me. So my mods went and found this video and it definitely confused me because the start of the video was my content. Then it cuts to his content of him playing the Last Guardian VR game. But it was like there was barely any mention of why I was at the start of it. It was like I was only there just for the intro and then it just kind of cuts to him. So I sent the video to YouTube, asked them about fair use, and YouTube took it down. Wrong. Due to the Online Copyright Infringement Liability Limitation Act, also called Safe Harbor, YouTube cannot get involved in copyright disputes. YouTube won't get involved in the process because fair use can only be determined in a court of law as Susie so aptly proves in the next segment of her video. Fair use is such a gray area, that's the thing. Like, fair use will only ever really be decided by a judge in court. So I sent the video to YouTube, asked them about fair use, and YouTube took it down. Fair use will only ever really be decided by a judge in court. As you can see, two completely conflicting statements here. It's very rare that I will ever actually ask to take down somebody's video, but if you actually saw the video in question, it was not a critique, the person was not talking over it. They literally took my section of the video at the end, zoomed in a little bit, zoomed out, and put some closed captions on it. Now, I have done so much research about this since Monday, and at no point has it fallen under fair use. Now, a primary figure in the Susie Liu investigation was Tipster, whose research has been invaluable in the creation of this video. He even brought on YouTube lawyer Ian Corzine for an interview to talk about fair use and how it related to the Susie Liu case and Mark After Dark's video. Yeah, of course that clip is fair use. I don't even understand how you can construe it any other way. Uh, Mark was making a joke and it's followed by a direct comment, the Michael Jordan picture in quote, after she makes her statement. Now I have done so much research about this since Monday and at no point has it fallen under fair use. Yeah, of course that clip is fair use. I don't even understand how you can construe it any other way. But this wasn't the original upload of the video. <laughs> no, 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 no. You see, Tipster's original upload of this video got taken down with a community guideline strike for bullying and harassment. Yes, an interview with a lawyer about fair use is bullying and harassment. This video's content was not harassment in any way at all, so suspicions started to arise about who could have possibly flagged down his video. And everyone's eyes went straight to Susie Liu. This leads us to the 31st of March, 2019, where Susie Liu appeared on an internet news show, RFC After Hours, where she attempted to give justification to some of the things she'd said and done over the past few days. During this stream, Susie and her mean boyfriend, Stijo, both show their YouTube flag history. Stijo's came out clean, but Susie, showing her flag history, 
might be the most iconic moment of all time on this show. I got five minutes. All right, then show your flag history. We don't need. We need else. to see your flag history. I don't care. I want to see your flag history. I mean, this is this is vital. If you want to prove your innocence, you got to show your flag history. Why would I care to prove my innocence to a bunch of nobodies on the internet? <laughs> oh, you're definitely not guilty. You flag tipster. Oh, no, 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 no. We, you got to see video. We can't see that. We need the screen share. We need, we need the screen share. Oh, whoa, whoa. Hold on. Lots of, lots of GG reloaded, though. Yeah, lots of GG reloaded. <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. Look on the right hand this, this side. Is not, this, down. this is not a good look, Susie. Wait yeah, a minute! It's all the stuff it. talking about the story! Wait a minute! Yeah, wait! wait. A minute. Susie, no! Ooh, ooh, <laughs> I'm a channel over 100,000 subscribers. When you hit that point, you get your own like personal partner manager. So ultimately, I've been speaking with many different people at YouTube this week. So they are aware of the situation and they're at that point where the channels have been flagged and basically they're just looking into it at this point. And I know for a fact that a lot of the videos, they're just hate videos for the sake of it, you know. So the channels in question are currently being investigated. So that's some really good news. Yeah, I'm just, I'm leaving it in YouTube's hands now. They're aware of literally all the hate videos and uh, they're looking into them all, so. In the meantime, Susie's gummy boyfriend, Stejo, made a video defending Susie and her actions. And needless to say, some of the points were rather interesting. Susie Lou has an ego. Okay, I beg to differ, knowing her better than, you know, pretty much anyone. She routinely entertains hundreds of thousands of people a day. That, that's ego worthy, if you ask me. I mean, that's something to be f***ing proud of. But I can tell you from my own experience living with a woman that she has one of the smallest egos that I have ever known. Why would I care to prove my innocence to a bunch of nobodies on the internet? <laughs> she still thinks that she's a tiny f***ing YouTuber just entertaining a couple of friends. Ah yes, Susie Lou, one of the smallest egos ever to exist. The same person who doesn't want to prove her innocence to a bunch of nobodies on the internet and the person who, in 2017, told McDonald's workers on strike for higher wages to go and get an actual decent job. Now we go there, nope, no, not at all. And I'm not going to get in a argument about fair use. They say it's a false copyright strike and I've got something that'll fix every one of your f***ing videos. It ain't false. It's only a false copyright strike if it's not from the copyright holder. You cannot issue a false copyright strike. This isn't false because she owns the copyright. Copyright. Whether or not you think it's fair use is absolutely f all to do with it. You have to not own the copyright to issue a false strike. This is f idiotic. You people are morons. This clip is the reason I question the legitimacy of Stejo's credentials. He clearly doesn't understand fair use or copyright law as he defends Susie taking down Mark After Dark's clip. But then he also completely misrepresents what a false strike is. A false strike is not a legal term. It's just a name used for a takedown that a party might feel to be incorrect or unjustified. For you to give criticism, you require respect. I need to respect your opinion enough to take your criticism. If you're a random little cough on the internet who's never shown any interest in my channel or absolutely anything that I've done before, I don't respect you and therefore your criticism is f***ing nonsense. Now the reason Stejo and Susie have such an issue with any amount of hate or criticism is because of this mindset right here. If you only take criticism from your immediate audience, who's going to call you out when you mess up? Your diehard fans who blindly follow your every word? <laughs> no, it's got to be someone outside of your immediate circle who can take an objective view. So, in the words of Stejo, You people are morons. Now, there are many more shenanigans in this Susie Lou story that I'm not going to cover here, and I would have told you to check out Tips' videos on her, but just yesterday, Susie Lou mass flagged a bunch of Tips' videos on her, and they were taken down with a community guideline strike for, you guessed it, harassment and cyberbullying. I can only assume that she was trying to deter me from uploading this video. Once again, I'm pretty certain that she has someone at YouTube that run all these strikes through without much interference from a review team. But of all the people to pick for this special treatment, why Susie Lou, the same person who's been called out countless times by the community? At this point, Susie Lou has overstepped big time. And if she doesn't start to change her tune, larger and larger creators will start to cover this story and make the criticism impossible to ignore. For many months after this initial set of videos and responses from Susie Lou, she kind of just went under the radar. 
She did her own thing and minded her own business, and during that time, she started to transition her content from gaming to reactions. Namely, anime reactions. <laughs> so with this in mind, let's take a look at Susie Liu's current content and see what high-tier stuff she's making recently. Yes, I'm not kidding. These are the reaction videos she's making now. And if you think I'm making it look worse than it is, just take a look at her channel yourself. If she does give a reaction to anything, it's usually just some sort of exclamation which adds absolutely nothing to the video and isn't a comment of any sort. <laughs> Great stuff, Susie. Now, after Susie Lou found some success with these reactions, Steejo decided to do them as well. And you guessed it, they're just as bland. Now, apart from being bad content, it also, most likely, breaks copyright law. At the time of writing, I took her most recent Naruto Shippuden reaction and edited it down to all the parts when she speaks or has any sort of exclamation. Out of the 18 minute and 7 second video, she speaks for a whopping 3 minutes and 30 seconds. And if you do the math, 81% of the video is content that does not belong to her. Damn! Hats off! It doesn't require a genius to see this content does not satisfy fair use, but let's go through the four factors anyway because I want to flex on the haters. The first factor of fair use is the purpose and character of the use, including whether such use is of a commercial nature or is for non-profit educational purposes. Although no factor is independently determinative, the heart of fair use inquiry is the first factor, whether the use is transformative by adding something new with a further purpose or different character. The central purpose of this investigation is to see whether the new work adds something new, altering the first with new expression, meaning, or message. Now, I would say that Susie Liu's use of these almost full-length anime episodes is certainly not transformative. What is she adding to this at all? Is she altering the work with new expression, meaning, or message? I would say not. She isn't actually changing the intent of the anime at all. A bit ironic when you compare it with just a few months back when she said fair use had to be a criticism or critique. If you actually saw the video in question, it was not a critique, the person was not talking over it. The second factor, the nature of the copyrighted work, is rarely found to be determinative, so we can pretty much just ignore this factor entirely. The third statutory use factor turns on whether the amount and sustainability of the portion used in relation to the copyrighted work as a whole is reasonable in relation to the purpose of the copying. In assessing this factor, the courts consider not only the quantity of the material used, but also their quality and importance. The crux of this inquiry is whether no more content was taken than necessary, given the purpose and character of the allegedly infringing use. Susie Liu is using large portions of the original animes, adding minimal reactions and commentary that doesn't change anything in line with the first factor, and she's certainly not taking only what is necessary. So, to be honest, right now this doesn't look good for Susie. The fourth factor is perhaps the most scathing for Susie Liu. This factor applies to the effect of the use upon the potential market for or value of the copyrighted work, and concerns whether the secondary use usurps the market of the original work. A defendant usurps the original work's market when the infringer's target audience and the nature of the infringing content is the same as the original. Thus, the more transformative the secondary use, the less the likelihood that the secondary use substitutes for the original. I'm going to answer this question with another question. Who is watching these videos? I think it's pretty clear that the people watching these anime reactions are fans of the anime that she's viewing. Thus, Suzy Liu is stealing market share away from the original creators of the series and is usurping demand for the work by serving as a market substitute. She shows enough of the anime in these videos that people would rather watch her reaction than pay for it. Just the other day, she claimed she had the permission from Crunchyroll to view these animes on her website because Crunchyroll advertises on her website, even though all the ads are from Google AdSense and Google places them automatically. It's an interesting point, actually. I wonder if Google would actually be very happy with Susie Liu uploading copyrighted content and then placing their ads next to it. Just something to think about. Now, any court would look at this content and wonder how it even got to that stage. It's so blatantly not fair use, I don't even know how Susie or her boyfriend would rationalise it. So, if this is against fair use, why hasn't she gotten in trouble yet?
Her channel has gotten removed for violating copyright. Suzilu's been terminated now. My best friend Suzilu just got her channel terminated from YouTube. Well, this week, for about a full day, Susie Lou's channel was completely terminated for violating copyright. So you might have noticed the past couple of weeks have been a bit weird on my channel. On the 27th of December 2019, Susie Liu's channel was terminated for copyright infringement just 20 days after she was featured very prominently in the 2019 YouTube Rewind. She had received over three DMCA takedowns or copyright strikes from Tokyo TV for her use of the Naruto animes. And if you don't know how the strike system on YouTube works, after three strikes, your account gets terminated. So basically, I was at a Christmas party with family. We were seeing all the nieces and the nephews and things like that. And I was absolutely hammered. And I went to check it and it was like account suspended. And I, I was so drunk and I was just like, what? I was like, I don't have enough strikes on my channel for that to be a thing, I must be drunk. And then by the time I woke up the next day, I was like, are you joking? Okay, I basically phoned up my YouTube partner manager and I was like, what the heck's going on? And I felt so bad because my partner manager and then all the people that work with him were, they're supposed to be on holiday until next week. So they went straight back into office and they found out what happened. Now, as I've stated before, these strikes were most likely valid, but what does YouTube do? They reverse all of them. Now, as I've stated before in this video, YouTube is protected under Safe Harbor, which means that they are not responsible for copyrighted content uploaded by their users. But to qualify for this, service providers have to adopt a system where repeat violations result in termination and has to inform users of this, which YouTube does. And they also have to make sure their systems don't interfere with standard technical measures, which are technical measures that are used by copyright owners to identify or protect copyrighted works. In other words, a DMCA takedown request. By reinstating Suzy Liu's videos and removing the strikes, YouTube is directly getting involved in copyright disputes and reversing a legitimate decision of a copyright owner to take down a video. All two days after Christmas, mind you. I'm convinced that there has to be some simp running this operation because there's no way that someone in their right mind would go out of their way to break the law for Suzy Lou. It was all people who, like, they break apart the footage that they use. And obviously, if you guys are not aware, there is fair use. And the whole point of that is to take the original works, do something with it, make it different, and then make it your own. And that's a really big thing on YouTube. And I feel like that's what allows most of the content to even exist. A gross overgeneralization of fair use here. And it's very interesting. AC 1% of content that isn't yours is fair use, but Mark After Dark's clip isn't? Okay then, Susie. So a couple of days ago, I done a video talking to you guys about TV Tokyo and this bot that they keep tucking onto YouTubers. It's not just me, it's so many other people, it's a joke. And I can't actually get too into it because it's now a legal case behind the scenes. But uh, we're coming for you, okay? We are coming for you. I'm sure suing one of the biggest entertainment companies in Japan is going to go very well for you, Susie. Now, I went on a full search for any cases, including Tokyo TV. I went to the Japanese Supreme Court website, and I went to the UK Supreme Court website, and none of them have any cases listed for Suzy Lu, Tokyo TV, YouTube, or anything similar. So whatever action they're taking, it isn't listed in the court system. But while all of this was going down, some people figured out something else about our buddy Susie over here. It turns out that for weeks and weeks and weeks, Susie Lou had been uploading uncut anime reactions to her Patreon. Yes, you heard me. No cuts, no pauses, the full episode with Susie going, it's very funny because as soon as we called attention to it, she completely removed all of the episodes and privated her Patreon so that we couldn't see how much she was making. But we can extrapolate, and Nicholas Diorio said that following the current trend data, she would have hit $10,000 a month on January the 6th, 2020. $10,000 a month from full-length anime episodes. At that point, 
It's just pure theft. Tipster told me a while back that she had stopped uploading uncut anime reactions, but in the interest of good journalism and research, I decided to pledge $5 of my hard-earned money acquired from my wonderful Patreons to Susie Lou's Patreon to see what she was up to. It's like a Patreon ecosystem, isn't it? Pledge to my Patreon for more high-quality research. <laughs> okay, that's enough of the plug. Let's check out this Patreon. And, uh, wait, what, what, what's, what's this? She's still doing it? Yes, folks, these are unedited with the full anime visible in the corner, hosted by Vimeo, whose guidelines state that no rips of movies, music, television, or any other third-party copyrighted material are allowed to be uploaded on their website. Patreon states that if potential online piracy is funded through, hosted, or located on their platform, they have a robust copyright procedure in place to facilitate the removal of those potential infringements, or in certain cases, termination of entire accounts. So Susie is in violation of some serious stuff over here. You can't tell me for one minute that this stuff is fair use and she's not violating copyright law. She is in 100% clear violation. We haven't checked on Steejo for a while, have we? Let's, let's see what his Patreon looks like. Well, he's still uploading anime reactions, but it, it's unclear whether these are cut or not. Uh, really can't tell. I don't really want to pay. And uh, Oh, wait, what's this? Do you guys watch on Patreon because they're unedited or because they're fully visible? Would you rather for me to upload the fully edited... Steejo, no! How dim do you have to be to make this section public? So Steejo is still uploading uncut anime on his Patreon. A complete violation of copyright law and Patreon's own terms. Just remember, this guy studied law. He thought the anime reactions on Suzy Lu's main channel was okay, he thought his own reactions on his main channel were okay, and he thought the uncut reactions on both their Patreons were okay. Where did this guy go to law school? So that seemed to be the end of Suzy Lu's anime escapades. She was reduced to just watch-alongs on her main channel for Naruto and could only react to a select group of animes. But if there's one thing you should know about Suzy Lu, is that she's very persistent. I am so excited to be recording this video right now. A couple of months back, I had this crazy idea about creating my own website. So I had this idea back in November. It is now the 29th of January, and I am so happy to announce that the website is going live tonight. Oh no. Now, this website, suzylou.co.uk, houses many different types of reactions for Suzy Lou. According to her, once they get a subscription service rolled out, you'll be able to watch uncut reactions on her website instead. She's really intent on stealing other people's money, isn't she? For now, the home for the majority of her reactions are here. But unlike YouTube, Suzy Lou isn't protected under safe harbor laws. She isn't hosting other people's content. She's uploading her own which means that to stop her from using their content, Tokyo TV will sue her. It seems to curb this, Susie Lu originally blocked the website in Japan. Susie, why did, you, why, why did you think this would work? And it seems her website was already caught in legal trouble, as many of her links are in the Lumen database and were apparently DMCA'd and removed from Google. Obviously, as she isn't hosting content for other users, she doesn't have this function on her own site. She's, she's just gonna get sued. You also can't turn ad block off on her website, which means that you're constantly giving her money for stealing other people's animes. So that's very ethical. At the end of the day though, I really do think Susie and Sijo are past the point of no return. They've established themselves as absolute jokes in any serious communities and will continue to be criticized and scrutinized until they make an effort to change their behavior. But let's be honest. That's never going to happen. It's just fun to see everything go down. But if there's one thing I want you to take away from today, it's that Susie Lou can't handle criticism and is in violation of copyright law on a daily basis. And YouTube does everything they can to protect her, even if it means getting sued themselves. But hey, that's just how the cookie crumbles on this wonderful website, doesn't it? Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.